Welcome back live to the 2022 Ryan Conference USA football kickoff show. Rice Owls are next up. They had five one-score games in 2021, including a pair of overtime losses. This team was in a ton of games. Last year, their record at 4-8. and eight. The season opener, whoa, September the 3rd at USC. That is going to be a fun one on the West Coast. Their conference opener is October the 1st against UAB. Alongside Mike Bloomgren, Shea Baker, and Trey Schumann joining us, we have the Rice Owls in the house. Coach, how you doing? Doing great. Good to have your team here. I mean, I got to look at that schedule. The first game of the season at USC, you guys got to be excited about that one. Oh, yeah. What more can you ask for? You know, we get to start training camp a week from today, which we're so excited about the work these guys have put in all summer. And then we know that the transition will happen from preparing for the Rice Owls and trying to make us the best version of ourselves to then preparing for USC and, and Lincoln Riley's first game out there in the Coliseum. And I've told these guys from experience, Coliseum is a great place to win. And we're going to go in there with that mindset. All right, you enter your fifth season as the head coach here at Rice. What do you want to accomplish? What goals have you set for the team this year? Yeah, it's it's growth. It's minute-by-minute minute growth, being better five minutes from now than we were before, better tomorrow than we were today, and continuing to take steps in this program. And, and it's going to culminate with a bowl game win. And that's all we're focused on is, is how we get this team in position to do that, to compete for this conference championship and to win a bowl game. What was the focus this offseason in terms of offense, defense, getting some continuity? How'd you guys, how'd you get the guys locked in? Yeah, so it's interesting in the modern era of college football when you bring in a lot of new pieces, right? We had four new transfers join us for spring football, and then we've had eight more join us this summer. The great thing is between our coaching staff and these older heads, they kind of show those guys how we do things. They educate them on what the standards in our program are, and uh, they, they get them up to speed, not just with the playbook, but with day-to-day -day life as a Rice Owl. You come from Stanford, obviously an academic institution. You come here to Rice, another outstanding academic institution. How do you instill that culture here now in your fifth year? Yeah, I think that we're really – we try to make it as simple as we can, right? We want to play – great football and get a world-class degree and anything outside of those two things we shouldn't let it interfere with those two things and, and we know about the degree and how amazing that is we know like we have two guys right here that are in their second year of the MBA program at Rice and we Whoa. know how outstanding that is <laughs> uh, but the other thing like you, you're just talking about now we've got to get the football right and we've been working really hard to do that we're at a point where we think we've got unbelievably talented guys that understand what we want in this system and, and now it's time to have that great competition in training camp to forge this team that's going to be the 2022 Rice House. Let's start with the offense. Break down the offense, what you've seen so far, and some of the position battles that you're going to key in on. Yeah, I mean, we've got battles that are going to go on all across the field. You know, uh, Shea Baker's a guy that at the offensive line position that had to move from guard to center when we had an injury last year, and now we have that, that center coming back. Shea slid, slid over to guard, and we know he can play center in a pinch if he needs to and do a great job with that. And I think it might even be his, his best position as his career goes forward in this great game of football. Uh, but you've got those battles going on. You've got a freshman uh, in Ethan Aniawa that's stepping up and doing some unbelievable things. And we also brought in a guy that started games at West Virginia. So that's going to be a fun group. Uh, and then right behind them, the group everybody wants to talk about is the quarterbacks. And we've got two guys that came out of spring in a good battle. And T.J. McMahon is, is just going to start camp that much ahead. But we're going to have a great competition between him and Wiley Green. And then we can never forget about Giovanni Johnson, who was the quarterback when we beat Marshall when they were ranked 15th in the nation two years ago. So there's a, a lot of excitement around there. You talk about the tight end group. We've got great leadership from Jack Bradley. And then we brought in a couple transfers in that room as well. And we've got a, a healthy version of Nate Camper coming back that we think can really stretch the field. Uh, the running back group, we've got it's proven commodities. We've got three guys that have rushed for 100 yards in a game coming back in our program. And we're adding one from an FCS school in Uriah West from Jacksonville State that's going to contribute to that room. And then the exciting room for us right now is the wide receiver group. And everybody wants to talk about the portal. Like, is the portal a positive or a negative? And the portal's hard. Nobody would tell you it's not. But it's been such a net positive for us. There's, there's no way before the portal and these transfer regulations that we could have brought in uh, 200 and – 30 catches for 2,800 yards in college football. And we were able to, to do that by bringing in three transfers in the wide receiver room. In addition to getting some guys back from last year's team and Bradley Rosner from two years ago, 
And, uh, oh, yeah, we're switching over to this guy named Luke McCaffrey from quarterback to receiver who's going to be so much fun to watch. Tell me about that transition because that is huge. And how are you going to use him offensively? Yeah, we're going to use him in, in every way we can. Uh, that's the simple answer. I don't know if there's anything Luke can't do. And that's been so exciting. You know, the transition from quarterback to receiver happened so naturally. It's like his dad played in the National Football League at the receiver position for 10 years or something. But uh, all jokes aside, it, it was just so seamless. and It was so fun to watch him make that transition, not only to play the outside receiver in, in Z, but also to play some in the slot and really look comfortable there and, and just have an unbelievable spring game. All right, defensively, tell me about your unit. Who's the strength right now? Yeah, I think the, the strength of our unit is the fact that all these guys have played together so much. And, and that's going to be so much fun to, to see guys like Trey, who's a six-year senior, uh, step in there and, and lead that defensive line group. And then you got Ikena Ichuku, and then nobody remembers to Braylon Carroll because he didn't play last year. And uh, he's back, and, and he's moving around great, so you're going to have him do some really good things. Isaiah Floyd was probably our most productive defensive lineman in the spring. So it's just an exceptional group up front, and we know how that rush helps the coverage, and we know how it helps the fits of the D-line or the, the whole defense. So now, look, our linebackers are going to be a little less proven than most of our defense. They're going to be guys that are stepping in, but that's our defensive coordinator, Brian Smith's room. I love Coach Smith. I love how he coaches the whole unit and what he's dialing those guys into in his room. We saw growth literally practice to practice in spring ball, and we'll expect the same in training camp. And then on the back end, uh, I don't know that we've ever had this kind of competition. You know, it used to be like if somebody broke a shoestring, you like, Play, prayed for the game to get paused and, and now we've got guys that can just jump right in there at the safety spot the, another nickel can run on the field and the same is true at corner we've, we've just got so much experience coming back in that secondary and some of it was trial by fire whether it was during COVID when things happened in 2020 or last year because of an injury but because of that we sit here with all this experience on the back end and we're really excited about it nice I'm excited to get to know you guys I mean Two super smart dudes on this stage, <laughs> offensive lineman Shea Baker, defensive end Trey Schumann, both MBA students. Right. And I heard last night there was a party. You guys might have had to leave early to take some classes. All right, tell me what was going on. Uh, so I actually I used my negotiation skills, and I, I communicated with our professor, and he gave us the A-OK. -okay. So we did not have to go to class that night. Okay. But we were going to have to make an early exit because we do have class 8.30 to 10 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday, yep. and we will be doing that for the entirety of fall camp. So really looking forward to that on top of everything <laughs> else. How do you balance being an MBA student and a Division One football player? It's, uh, it's a lot of discipline, uh, being able to basically uh, put it in a different, different room of your house. Football in one room, NBA in the other, being able to focus uh, one part of your life earlier in the day and then at night be able to grind out your homework or class. Well, Shay, you lead this team on the offensive line in, in terms of starts, 42 career starts, one of the sure. leaders on this team. Offensively, Coach talked about a ton of battles going on. From the quarterback position, what have you seen and what have you liked so far out of your offense this spring? I've really, I've really liked uh, the battle, the uh, QB battle. Uh, there's a lot of leadership from there, uh, a lot of uh, grinding, a lot of hard work being put in every day, especially this summer. And uh, within the offensive unit, uh, one of the things we really harped on this spring was just being consistent, being consistent uh, day in, day out. And I think that's one of the things we've really improved on in the spring and working on it through the summer as a, as a whole team grinding together, being consistent uh, on our weeks of, uh, of workouts and runs. Trey, yeah. you had a breakout year last year. Yeah. 40 tackles, a career high in <laughs> tackles. What's the goal this season? I mean, the biggest goal is if you look at last year, you know, a breakout year, and uh, I would like to say I missed a fair amount of games. I think anyone that knows, Coach Bloom knows better than anyone, that there were a lot of times where I was on that sideline and wanted to be on that field. So truly the biggest thing for me is getting in all 12 games because I really feel like 40 tackles is the floor for me. The floor. The floor. Okay, I like that. I mean, and you guys were in a ton of close games yeah. last year. Do you use that as motivation, as kind of the chip on the shoulder? You know, you don't you don't take those those moral wins too much because at the end of the day, the those two overtime games were the difference between a bowl game. So really, what yeah. we turned it into is this this was um, it was good to see what we could do in those games, and we took things from those games that we can build upon. But we don't take those moral victories because at the end of the day, that went on an L on our playlist. So, you know, 
it's tough, but we, we took the stuff we needed to, and we're going to build moving forward. It won't happen again. Nice. I love this, being with NBA students <laughs> on the set. This is cool. <laughs> Coach, we're going to put up your schedule on the screen. Walk me through some of the highlights, what you see when you look at your schedule. Yeah, I think like we already talked about, going out there to L.A. to play USC and then having McNeese State come to our stadium, and we're going to have some special things around that game from a Rice historical standpoint, and then playing ULL, who was a top 15 team last year, last two years in college football, along with a great team from across the city, uh, who was also a top 15 team, and then we jump right in to playing UAB as our first conference opponent. The cool thing about that is they were the bully. They were the ones we were trying to find a way to beat last year, and we went to their place as a big underdog and, and knocked them off. So I, I'm super excited to play them again, bring them back to our stadium, and find a way to beat that bully again. And that's, again, that's our goal. That's what we're trying to get done is, is find a way to just go 1-0 and every week. And with these guys, these smart guys, intelligent football players, as long as we give them great processes and their coaches do a great job laying it out, it, it's, it's really easy to believe in them. Bowl game is the goal this season. It is, yes, sir. Coach, good luck. Really Thanks appreciate so much. you joining us. Absolutely. Uh, Rice Owls, bunch of smart guys <laughs> in the house. I love this stuff.